All right, so here we have a set of formulas, uh, A through E. And let's quickly, and I'm going to do this really fast and not uh, care too much about the process, but I'm going to generate the columns. And then the important part of this is we'll go back and uh, analyze the table that we've constructed and answer a bunch of questions about these formulas. So first of all, we've got two sentence letters. Let's generate the columns. True, false. True, false. Underneath S. Underneath T. True, true. False, false. All right, so S wedge T, then negate it. Obviously, we do the wedge first. So wedge is true when either part is true. We'll get true, 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 false. And then we're going to negate that. That will give us false, 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 true. That's the main connective, so we're going to circle it. We can cross that out. S ampersand T. Ampersand is true only when both parts are true. So if you have true ampersand true, that's true. False and true would give you false. True and false would give you false. False and false would give you false. Well, that's the only connective, so that is the main connective. Let's circle it. T wedge dash T. Uh, you probably know what this is already, but uh, under T, let's go ahead and write the values. True, true, false, false. So under dash t, obviously that's the opposite values. False, false, true, true. Wedge is true when either part is true. True wedge false would give you true. True wedge false is true. False wedge true is true. True False wedge true is true. Yes, this formula is always true. Let's circle that. That's what we care about. S double arrow S and then negate it. Well, when we compare S double arrow S, we're comparing S to itself. And the rule for the double arrow is that it's true when it's the same. So if we compare true to true, it's pretty much got to be the same to same as itself, so you're going to get a T. Compare false to false, it's once again got to be true. True to true is true, false to false is true. Now we negate that, and of course that will give us false false, 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 and we'll circle it. Oh gosh, everything is so messy. Finally, dash s, arrow dash t. Okay, so this one's uh, slightly more complicated. For dash s, let's put in false, true, false, true, the opposite of the s column. For dash t, let's put in the opposite of the t column, which would give us false, false, true, true. Now what's the rule for the arrow? True except T arrow F. Thus false arrow false is true. T arrow F, that's the false case. False arrow true, true. True arrow true, true. And circle it because that's the row we care about. Oh, that was a terrible circle. Can I try that again? Circle it because that's the one we care about. That's a little better. Okay, true, false, true, true. Okay, so we have constructed the table. Now we get to ask the exciting questions. Question number one. Which formulas, if any, are contradictions? What are we looking for? A column of all Fs. And so sentence D is a contradiction. Nothing else is a contradiction. Which formulas, if any, are tautologies? Tautologies are formulas which are always true, so C is a tautology. That's all T's. What's the other concept? Contradictions are all F's. Tautologies are all T's. Contingencies. Contingencies are any combination of T and false. Thus A, B, and E are contingencies. Those questions are, are trivial. Let's ask about logical equivalence. Which formulas are logically equivalent to formula A, if any? Is B logically equivalent? No, it's not. What do you have to be to be logically equivalent? You have to be identical on every single row. So not B, not C, not D, not E. Wait, I thought it was supposed to be logically equivalent. Oh, that's right, I changed it. We have no formulas here which are logically equivalent to each other. So is there anything logically equivalent to A? The answer is no. 
Anything logically equivalent to B? No. To C? No. To D? No. To E? No. There are no logically equivalent formulas on in this set. That's not a big deal. Logical equivalence is not very exciting. All right, next question. These are the ones that uh, we want to spend a little bit of time on, on, and that's entailment. And so here's the question. Which formulas, if any, are entailed by formula A? And I think when you do this, what you want to do is write down all the relationships that we're asking about. A to B, A to C, A to D, and A to E. Because if A entails B, when you're asking about that relationship, you're asking about the argument that goes from A to B. And that's what we represent here, the argument from A to B. If this argument is valid, then A does entail B. So what we're looking for is a counterexample. If we find a counterexample, then it does not entail what we're looking for is a T to F. If you find one, then the answer is no. So, does A entail B? Check each row, looking, of course, in the appropriate direction. Is there a row on which A is true and B is false? Yes, obviously there is, this fourth row. And so, does A entail B? No, it does not. We found a T to F. Does A entail C? Is there a place where A is true and C is false? No, there's not. Because when A is true, C has got to be true. And so does A entail C? Yes, it does. In fact, C is a tautology, right? Everything entails a tautology. So yes, A definitely does entail C. What about does A entail D? Well, D, of course, is a contradiction. A is true here, and D is false there, so A does not entail D. Contradictions are only entailed by other contradictions. All right. What about A to E? Does A entail E? Yes, it does, because when it's true, E is also true. So the answer there is yes. All right, let's ask about B. Uh, again, I'll write all these down. B to A b to c, b to d, b to e. And we're looking for a t to f. Okay, does b entail a? Now, the thing is, and I think this is one, one of the reasons that it's valuable to write out this relationship, you've got to look in the backwards direction here when you're looking from b to a. Is there a row on which b is true and A is false, and the answer is yes, there is, right there on the top. And so does B entail A? <clears throat> no, because we found a T to F right there. B does not entail A. Does B entail C? Yes, it does. When B is true, C is also true, and therefore B does entail C. Does B entail D? The answer is no, there's a T to F right there. Does B entail E? The answer is that yes, it does. Because when B is true, E is also true. Okay, uh, let's ask about C. Write all the relations. C to A, C to B, C to D, C to E. Does C entail A? Clearly not. C is true here, and A is false there. So, no. Does C entail B? No, there's going to be three counterexamples. Right there, there, and there. Does C entail D? Obviously not, because every time C is true, D is false. All you've got is counterexamples. Does C entail E? No, it does not, because once again we have a counterexample on the second row. C is true and E is false. Therefore, the answer is no. Of course, C is a tautology. What do tautologies entail? They only entail other tautologies. All right, let's get rid of some of this junk here. And now, we'll ask about D. This is so exciting. 
Uh, D to A, D to B, D to C. I don't even have to do this for D, right? Because you already know the answers. What is D? D is a contradiction. Contradictions entail everything. And notice if you look at it uh, in terms of the T to F, it makes perfectly good sense, right? Is there a row where D is true and A is false? Well, of course not, because D is never true. Therefore, does D entail A? Yes, it does. Because it's only when you find the T to F that you have the no answer. That's what is T to F? T to F is a counterexample. I should write that. Counter It's really one word. Counterexample. All right. Does D entail B? Yes. Does D entail C? Yes. Does D entail E? Yes. All right. Last example. Let's check E to A. E to B. E to C. E to D. Looking for a T to F. Does E entail A? No, it does not. We have a counterexample on the first row as well as the third row. Does D entail B? No, it does not. The third and fourth row are counterexamples. Does D does E entail C? Yes, it does. Everything entails tautologies. Does E entail D? No, it does not. We have three counterexamples from E to D. Make sense? I hope you're looking at this and saying, okay, this is, I hope you're bored by this. In fact, I hope you've already turned off this movie and said, why doesn't he just shut up about all this entailment stuff? Uh, last thing that we can ask about on the table is about consistency. We can ask, is this set of formulas logically consistent? To be consistent, means that they can all be true at the same time. And so what we're doing is checking rows all the way across. Do we have a row that comes out T's all the way across? If we do, then they're consistent. If we don't, then they're not consistent. And the answer is no, these are not consistent because we do not have a row of T's all the way across. If I ignore E, is the set that's just A, B, C, and D, is this set consistent? No, it's not consistent either because we do not find T's all the way across. What if I get, what if we just focus on A, B, and C? Is this set consistent? In fact, it's still not consistent because we still don't have T's all the way across. Um, if I was to change, let's say I get rid of this F right here. Oh, there I go. I just turned it into a T. That was easy. Um, now, I would say that ABC is consistent. That's not what I meant to do. Now, I would say that ABC is consistent because it's true all the way across. That's all that consistency is about. Let's. Can I make any bigger mess on this screen just like that? Oh, yes. Isn't that, that's, wow, what an awful mess. Okay. I guess I've had my fun. Um, that's it for truth tables.